Hello and welcome to a new Lila game from this CCC10 bonus 3 event. She plays against Toflays with black in a Nimzovich Larsen attack. We have b3 and now the book suddenly ends after knight f6. And in the Nimzovich Larsen usually black wants to play e5 to, to blunt this bishop coming to b2 and then defend this e5 pawn heavily and uh, try to, to keep this bishop biting into a pawn. But in this game, after knight f6 and bishop b2, e5 now, of course, is not possible anymore. So Lila pushed the other pawn into the center. She played d5. And now we have knight f3 and now bishop f5. Makes sense. Get this bishop out before we play e6. But now the knight attacked the bishop. And here Lila decided to go back with the bishop to d7. And here human players usually play d3 or g3 with uh, chances for both white and black. But in this game Stoflays prefer to play here c4 and attack the pawn immediately. And if black doesn't defend the pawn or doesn't take, then white has the chance to take out this knight and then win a pawn on d5. And this is exactly what happened because here Lila played knight c6 inviting Stoflays to, to give up her beautiful bishop for an extra pawn in the center. And after bishop takes she took back with the e pawn and now we have c takes on d5 and knight b4 trying to get back this pawn but knight c3 defends it and here Lila played bishop g4 now with some nasty threats. Pause the video if you would like the moment to um, find it yourself. Lila is threatening here, knight d3 check, winning the queen after the pawn takes the knight. So here Stoflace played f3 to chase the bishop back, the bishop goes back all the way. And the problem for y now is that this knight on h4 doesn't have squares. And in the same time the pawn on d5 is now attacked twice and Lila can win it by taking it with the knight. So here Stoflace played e4 to defend this pawn and this now allows uh, the knight to go to f5 if it is attacked with g5 but here after g5 which was played by Lila Stu didn't intend to go knight f5 because after knight f5 after bishop takes and pawn takes this pawn on, on d5 is weak it's isolated and black can uh, win it back anyway either now or after queen e7 check long castles and uh, knight takes on d5 so still instead of playing knight f5 here prefer to counter attack this knight on b4 and now the knight took on d5 in uh, view of uh, capturing back the piece on h4 but now instead of knight takes on d5 Stu took the, the knight with the pawn opening the e-file and also allowing here bishop b5 check when c6 is not possible since the pawn is here so actually taking now this knight here is not so great because of the bishop b5 Lila would be forced to play here bishop d7 and then white could castle short and, and rook e1 could be very very uncomfortable for the black king so that's why instead of taking on h4 Lila went for a check on e7 first and now if the bishop blocks or the queen blocks then she can take the knight there won't be bishop b5 checks but Stu played king f2 and now actually taking this knight would be completely losing for black because now bishop b5 and rook e1 comes even faster rook e1 comes uh, winning this queen so Lila would be forced to play here king d8 but after rook e1 black is in big trouble and uh, the mate on e8 is also threatened so uh, Lila would be forced to play bishop e6 here and, and lose a piece so taking on h4 is not so simple but Lila of course saw all this and she went here for queen c5 check and now after d4 she took the other knight on c3 but we still have bishop b5 check and rook e1 is coming so we have king d8 and Lila can castle now so it's very difficult to, to get these pieces out, especially the rook. We have rook e1, threatening mate, 
on e8. And now here Lila found a nice move, bishop c5, which allows this rook to guard the a square. And it's also threatening to take here with check on d4. And the point is that if the pawn takes the bishop, then after queen c5 check and the rook e3, uh, Lila can take back the bishop. And yes, her king is uh, stuck in the center and I can get some chances here with d6. But remember, Stu's knight is still attacked and uh, still doesn't have places to go to. And uh, the game would be equalish in, in this position. So Stu didn't go for pawn takes bishop. Instead, he decided to defend this pawn with the rook. And now she's threatening rook c1 winning the bishop actually so here Lila played check and that's the king g1 bishop b6 and Stu evaluates this position at minus 0.2 but Lila says this is almost winning for black here minus 1.6 and she was actually expecting here a forced draw by perpetual because white can't save this knight and he has to go for a forced draw here and Lila was expecting here this variation with rook b1, queen takes, queen e2, c6, and then d takes on c6, a6, and rook d1 with pressure on the e5 and threatening mate on e8. And after king c7, c takes on b7, bishop takes, queen c4 check, king b8, bishop c6, rook c8, rook e8, rook takes, rook takes, king a7, and they exchange the rooks. Stoflays would have here queen f7 check with a perpetual check here. The king can't hide. And this would be a draw. But Stoflays didn't go for this. And instead he played king h1 accepting the loss of a piece in exchange for some pressure. We have a6 now attacking the bishop. And now Lila took the knight. We have queen e1, bishop d7 now forced, rook e2. Queen takes on d4 and now rook d1. Stu is down a piece but he has some serious pressure here. We have queen f4 now and bishop takes, king takes and now d6 trying to open the d file and after c takes on d6 we have rook e4 attacking the queen and after queen g5 rook e7 and it looks like white's initiative is very very dangerous here. The king is stuck in the center and this rook is stuck in the corner. And actually here now after queen e4, Stoflays is threatening mate in one. And rook b8 defending the mate would fail after rook takes on f7 and threatening queen e6 check and mate on d7. And if now the queen goes to e5 to block the queen, then queen g4 check is very very strong, forcing f5. But now after rook takes on f5, black is lost. He, he will lose the queen or will get mated after rook f7 and queen d7. So uh, rook b8 doesn't work and bishop c7 blocking the mate this way is only good for a draw after queen c4, queen c5 and now rook c1 and uh, this uh, bishop is pinned and will be won. Uh, taking here would actually lose for black because now this rook will take on c7 and white will have two rooks on the seventh, which is a decisive advantage. But instead of queen takes, black can play here king d8, counterattacking this rook. And now after queen f4, queen takes on c1. There's not, nothing else here for black. Queen takes, and now the king can take on, on e7. And after queen takes on c7 with check, this is only good for equality here for black. So neither bishop c7, neither rook b8 is uh, winning here for black. But Lila still evaluates this position at minus 3.1, completely winning for black. So what does she have in mind here? How is this winning for black? Well, she came up with this amazing move, rook a7, defending the mate this way, hiding the rook completely, but defending b7. What a beauty. And the point is that now this king can actually hide if it needs to. So Lila is playing down their rook at this point, but... If she manages to survive Stofley's attack, then in the end, the extra piece, this bishop on b6, will be uh, enough for a win. The game now continues here with h3, and now we have f5, 
we need to, and now rook d8, defending the d6 pawn, rook e1, queen f6, defending here, but now after queen c4 check, Stoflays can pick up the f7 pawn with tempo on the queen. We have queen d4, hoping for a queen exchange, but Stoflays played here queen e6, maintaining the pressure. But Lila has now the chance to activate her rook, and she played here rook a8, and the rook comes back from death, basically. And Lila's plan is to play here king a7 and then activate this rook. And once that rook gets out of there, uh, white will be lost. So here the game now continues with queen e7. And now we have queen d5 defending here, a4. And now finally the king uh, feels much safer now on a7. And Stu doesn't have much to do here. He played here a5, and after bishop takes, he also played b4, hoping for bishop takes, when uh, with rook b1, she could maybe increase the pressure on b7. But here a5 is just good enough for a win, uh, blocking the b5, and there's nothing white can do here. But instead of uh, bishop takes on b4, Lila actually played here rook e8, attacking the queen, and uh, attacking this rook on e1. And... Um, White can't give up the queen for two rooks because the rook on f7 is also hanging and uh, the queen can go away because then uh, the rook takes on e1. So here Stu played rook g7 giving up the queen but doubling the rooks on the 7th rank. But now after bishop back to b6, Lila's material advantage is decisive and actually this is a mate in 13. But Lila didn't go for the most decisive moves here and she just played here after king h2, rook c8, and now we have rook takes on a7 and rook c1. Here, bishop f2 would be the quickest with the idea of playing bishop g3 and then mating on the back rank. But instead we have rook c1, and now we have rook takes on h4, and now Lila gives up the f4 pawn, rook takes, queen d1, and this is now a mate in 12. We have rook f7, and now bishop g1 check, king g3, and queen back to b5 to defend b7, h4, bishop d4, king g4, a5, rook f5, bishop e5, pawn takes on a5, queen d4 check, f4, and here now after queen d1 check and king g5, Lila gives up her bishop, but now we have queen d2, a6, king takes, g4, and after rook c5 check, king g6, Lila wins back a rook, g5, and now she wins a pawn, and after rook h7, she wins another pawn with check, king f7, queen g1, king f6, queen b1, rook f7, queen c2, king g7, queen d2, this is completely over now, but we have queen c2, king e6, queen d2, rook f5, and now they exchange the rooks, and... Uh, after that, Lila is uh, promoting both of her pawns. She likes to allow her pawns to reach their maximum potential. We have king f4, and now she promotes this pawn to a bishop. King f5, b6, and now here comes Bernie. The other pawn moves off the board quickly, and she will become a second queen. And now after queen d6 checks, Lila gives up her old queen, and then uses the second queen to mate the white queen. Here after queen c6, the game is over. A very nice game. Lila was under pressure, but she managed to survive and win with the extra bishop. In the reverse game, uh, Lila playing white, they actually drew. In the end, I would like to thank to Sebastian Bardon for his $5 contribution to my channel. And of course, I would also like to thank to René Adolf uh, Todor, Radu and Guilherme for their contribution. Please subscribe, like and share and check out some of the other games. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.